Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and I want to talk a little bit today about uh, cultural intelligence, uh, specifically uh, cultural clusters, and uh, I want to talk about the 10 largest cultural groupings in the world a little bit and give you some tools to use as you think about CQ. You know, each of these uh, continuums uh, are dominant orientations uh, for the largest cultural clusters in the world. Uh, you may find that your preference in some cultural value orientations is similar to others from your uh, cultural cluster of origin. And there may be other cultural values in which you have different preferences from your cultural background. You'll need to find a list of, uh, of the 10 largest cultural clusters in the world and places where you are likely to find them. The countries listed with, with each cluster are not the clusters themselves. There is a diversity of culture in most of these countries. But these are places where these large cultural clusters have a strong influence on the dominant cultures there. All of the typical cautions about stereotyping apply here. You can't categorize the entire world in 10 large groups. But these 10 clusters provide a good starting point for thinking about their respective dominant norms. Number one, treat these global clusters as sophisticated stereotypes. Your first best guess about someone from an unfamiliar culture. Stereotypes follow a bell curve. Most Koreans are high power distance, but you'll meet some who are low power distance. Two, use cultural values and the global clusters as, a dis as descriptive terms that are neutral and not judgmental or evaluative. For example, it would not be appropriate to describe a culture that emphasizes being lazy. Likewise, it would be inappropriate to describe high context, indirect culture as deceitful. At the same time, it's useful to know that some cultures place more emphasis on pursuing quality of life or being, and some cultures place more emphasis on indirect communication or high context. In sum, it is critical to avoid negative stereotypes always. Being open to changing your mental models and assumptions. Keep your best first guess to yourself. Use it as an initial guideline. Check to see if your expectations were accurate, and if not, change them. Invest the time and effort to get to know an individual or an organization in his own right, rather than using broad generalizations. That may or may not apply. Create a heading or as a part so that it's easy to pick out the content. So uh, when you are uh, taking a look at each, each individual culture, you know, be open. As you look at your individual cultural value preference, remember that one culture value, like individualist, isn't better or worse than another, like collectivist, for instance. Instead, this is descriptive information, knowing your cultural values, and it's a form of self-awareness, and this is essential in developing CQ. Remember, individualists emphasize individual goals and individual rights. Without CQ, they may be viewed as lone rangers. In contrast, collectivists emphasize groups and personal relationships. Without CQ, they may be perceived as lacking personal initiative. So, I want you to think about a time when cultural value influenced your interactions. Let's talk about power distance. So, individuals with low power distance emphasize equality 
and shared decision making. And individuals with high power distance emphasize differences in status and expect superiors to make decisions. Without CQ, with low power distance, this may be perceived as uh, disrespectful followers or weak leaders. In contrast, people with high power distance may be perceived as passive followers or dictatorial leaders. So think of a time when this cultural value influenced your interactions. Now let's talk briefly about uncertainty avoidance. Low uncertainty avoidance emphasizes flexibility and adaptability. Some with low uncertainty avoidance may be perceived by those who don't have high CQ as being unprepared or disorganized. High uncertainty avoidance emphasizes planning, predictability, and a person with this orientation may be perceived as uptight and inflexible. So take a minute and think about a time when cultural value influenced your interactions. Let's talk about cooperative and competitive. Individuals who are cooperative emphasize collaboration and a nurturing approach, whereas individuals who are competitive emphasize competition, assertiveness, and achievement. Someone who is cooperative may be perceived by someone with low CQ as weak, whereas someone who is competitive may be perceived as combative. Now take a minute and think about a time when this cultural value influenced your interactions. Next, let's briefly talk about time orientation. Short term time orientation emphasizes immediate outcomes, that's success now, which may be perceived by individuals with low CQ as short-sighted. Long-term orientation emphasizes long-term planning, or success later, which may be perceived as unsustainable. So think about a time when this cultural value influenced your interactions. Context. You're either low or direct, or high and indirect. So, low context or direct Individuals emphasize explicit communication, the words, and may be perceived by those with low CQ as blunt or rude. Indirect or high context individuals emphasize indirect communication, tone, context, and may be perceived as obtuse or unclear. Cultural differences on direct versus indirect communication create some of the largest points of conflict for many teams. So now consider your preference in this area alongside others on your team. Think of a time when this cultural value influenced your interactions. Let's talk about being versus doing. Individuals with a being orientation emphasize quality of life, while individuals with a doing orientation emphasize being busy and meeting goals. Those with a being orientation may be perceived by those with low CQ as lazy, and those with a doing orientation may be perceived as workaholics. Now consider how you perceive others who have an orientation different from you in this particular area. Think of a time when this cultural value influenced your interactions. Let's talk about universalism versus particularism. Universalists focus on established rules, standards that apply to everyone, whereas particularists are more interested in specific and unique standards that are based on relationships. Universalists may be perceived as inflexible, while a particularist may be perceived as showing favoritism with a team member, for example, being too demanding as a customer. Think of a time when this cultural value influenced 
your interactions. Let's talk about neutral versus effective. For those with a neutral orientation, there's an emphasis on non-emotional communication and they tend to hide their feelings. For someone with an effective orientation, there's an emphasis in expressive communication and they share feelings openly. Someone who is neutral may be perceived as cold or aloof, whereas someone who is effective may be perceived as overly emotional. Think of a time when this value inched your interactions. All right, let's talk about monochronic versus polychronic. Now, monochronic is the emphasis on one thing at a time, and work and personal life are kept separate. Polychronic is the emphasis on many obligations, and work and personal life can be mixed. As a person who is monochronic, uh, these may be perceived as a uh, impersonal uh, or inflexible. And a person who is polychronic may be perceived as irresponsible or distracted. So take some time and think about this when this cultural value influenced your interactions. So individual cultural value orientations are really important. You know, we each, as individuals and as leaders who influence others, need to uh, be aware of our general preferences in life and how it affects our working relationships. They describe how we typically get things done, and they provide us some insight into prior conflicts that you may have experienced when interacting with people who have different cultural value orientations. So we need to really be able to understand and explain why you and most other people subconsciously prefer interacting with people who have cultural value orientations that are similar to your own. Cultural values reveal personal preferences and diversity on a team. They also might reveal potential points of bias or frustration. However, they don't reveal whether you can work effectively with others who have different cultural value orientations. Cultural values are best understood within the framework of the four CQ capabilities. Otherwise, they have little value. CQ describes intercultural capabilities for moving across cultural value differences. So really understanding your CQ truly can have a difference in the people that you lead in your organization or that you influence as members of teams. Uh, you can help them uh, better uh, use their natural talents and leverage their diversities if you understand yourself first and then you help people uh, make the necessary adjustments by creating teams where understanding is fluid and your, the, the creativity and strengths of individuals can best be flushed out. All right, thanks so much for your valuable time. I appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes and watching this video, and I hope you're enjoying the course. And more than that, I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it.